Wrestling fans around the corner, around the world, I'm Dan Marotti. And I'm the fabulous moolah. Oh, I'm Tony Atlas, Mr. USA. Oh, I'm May Young. Which one am I? Young. Yes. Well, you and May had something in common. <laughs> but we both like women. <laughs> a special edition of Wrestling Insiders is coming up. Stand by. Boston Wrestling Sports and the MWF explodes into a new year of unknown with professional wrestling content galore, and we need you to join our family. Every Tuesday night at 10 p.m. after we review the previous night's Monday Night Raw, it's Wrestling Insiders at your house with the unpredictable WWE Hall of Famer, Mr. USA, Tony Atlas. Wednesday nights after WWE, NXT, and AEW at 10 p.m., you never know who's going to show up on Wrestling Insiders Special Edition. Every Thursday night at 10 p.m. after our NXT and Dynamite review, it's Marty Jannetty's No Holds Barred, Sex, Drugs, and Rock and Roll Journey Through the 80s and 90s on Wrestling Insiders Party with Marty. Friday nights after the lights go down at the Thunderdome on SmackDown, it's John Cena Sr.'s Wrestling Insiders Fabulous Fridays. Plus, look for classic clips, bonus live episodes, pay-per-view watch-alongs, and more. If you want early, ad-free access to all of our Wrestling Insider talk shows, our acclaimed studio shoot interview DVD library, and to help keep wrestling legends working during the worst of times, for less than a cup of coffee at Starbucks, join our growing family at patreon.com backslash Boston Wrestling. Expect the unexpected in 2021. This is Mick Foley. This is Harley Race. This is Shelton Benjamin. This is Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. This is the Monster Abyss. And this is Daniel Bryan. This is JBL and you're watching the MWF. Be there live. All right, Tony, usually we have you with us on Tuesday. We have a big episode coming up this Tuesday, every Tuesday, as we have a big announcement coming up that the fans, are, I think, are really going to be interested, or at least some fans that enjoy current events in the world. We don't want to spoil that yet. Uh, but with the, the breaking news, as you were coming to the studio today, I felt it warranted its own episode immediately, uh, is uh, the, the passing of another of the Brotherhood that I would have loved to have had here in the studio. The natural Butch Reed passed away at the age of 66 on Friday. Yeah, yeah, that was amazing. Uh, uh, I was at the big event with him, you know, a couple of years back uh, 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 at LaGuardia Airport. And, uh, you know, me and him, we had some matches together in Mid-South. And I, 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 I was with him. Uh, uh, I remember when he did WWF. And, you know, we're going to miss uh, Butch. Butch was a, uh, you know, a, a nice guy. Well, I wouldn't say a nice guy because Butch had a temper. He loved to fight. Did he? Oh, yeah. One time he was giving Harley Race some trouble. We was at the Ramada Inn uh, by the airport in Atlanta, Georgia. Really, it's in Hateville is where the airport is at. Well, he kept messing with Harley Race, kept messing with Harley Race. Fairly, Harley Race got up and beat him up. Really? And Butch was all like this. And Harley Race, you know. Yeah, we, at first we thought Butch was going to hurt Harley. Was Butch known as a tough guy? Yeah, yeah, he was known as a tough guy, but he just wasn't as tough as Harley Race. So and what he, what happened at the Harley airport when Harley, up. what did Harley, he do? Harley just beat him up, beat him up real good. What did he do? Well, first Harley knocked him down, kicked him, picked him up, knocked him down again, kicked him some more. It's like a fight. It's a fight. And Harley, Harley had the upper hand from beginning to end. Butch couldn't handle it. What was amazing, because we ran to try to help Harley, because, you know, Harley was an older man then, mm -hmm. and Butch, a young guy. This when Harley was, was managing the, the Van Vader. Oh, these are the WCW. Right, day. Oh, and Butch right. Reed was in Doom. Okay. Yeah, and, 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 and he kind of messed around with Harley Race there. Harley was, what, I don't think Harley was, I don't think he was wrestling there. He was no, he was managing he was people managing, like Vader yeah, and Lex yeah, Luger. He had a and, suit on. And, yeah. and, and, and it was in the bar. We was all drinking, like 11 or 12 o'clock at night. And she would let us stay there a little bit later, the lady that ran the, uh, the, the place. She stayed there for what I hear. Oh, really? So, yeah, the same lady is still running it. And they got in a fight in the dressing room. My goodness. I mean, to see Harley Race. This was fighting, at a bar? Yeah, at, yeah, the at the hotel. At a hotel, okay. hotel bar, yeah. But, but uh, uh, to see Harley Race fight in a real fight, 
was really, really amazing. Was he nasty? Well, it was a, the power of his punches. It was something about the way he hit. I mean, we, we hit people, they just buckle. Did Reed get any offense in? He, he hit Harley a couple of times, but every time Harley hit him, you could see his knees buckle. Really? When Harley hit him, his knee would buckle. Then he'd swing at Harley again, Harley hit him again, his knee would buckle, you know? i go, wow, look at that. You did, let's put it in, right. you didn't want Harley Race to hit you. I mean, he was, it was something about just the way he punched. He wasn't a big, strong guy, you know, in he, wrestling, in wrestling, in, a, in an amateur mount, I probably could whoop Harley in an amateur bout. Harley knew very little about Yeah, you, were a, you had a shoot yeah, background. Right, right. He was not a wrestler, but he was a hell of a street fighter. I mean, if you're in a fight, another guy that was a hell of a street fighter that nobody knew about was Daddy Davis. Dangerous Danny Davis? David really? Daddy Davis. Never knew he, that. He saved, and Vince, you know I'm telling the truth. You know I'm telling the truth when I tell this story. Vince was checking into a hotel one time. Danny David was riding a car with Vince. Mm -hmm. I can't remember if I was with SD or Rocket. I, I can't remember the, the, the year. But I knew I was, I was there. And Vince, I saw Vince going into the hotel. You know, they got the big one where you could see everything. Yep. With Vince, I guess the guy said something to Vince, or Vince said something to the guy that got in the fight. So we had to come across the parking lot. We were going to go in and help him. Then I see Danny David shoot in there real fast. Danny started kicking the shit out the guy. Really? The guy beat up Vince. Wow. Yeah. Where was that? Do you remember? It was some hotel that we was at. I, I, these t sometimes the towns kind of get fuzzy. There's been a lot of towns in yeah, your day. Yeah, yeah. We go to so many towns. We remember the story. But there's certain places that we do remember the story. And then there's certain places. I remember the story, but not the exact town. You know, but I knew we, because up here we used to drive everywhere then. There was not all these flights. We'd take a flight here and a flight there. You know, that was during the days of territory. Mm -hmm. So I want to say it had to be either in, oh, maybe Connecticut or New Hampshire. I want to say New Hampshire. For some reason, uh, 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 Manchester, New Hampshire come to come to man. I, I, I'm not sure, but I know it wasn't a Portland one. Well, Manchester's... I, I, I know I mean, the hotel we stayed at, but this hotel was, was, was a hotel. It was a, it was more like a motel than a hotel. Mm -hmm. Kind of like a motel yeah. six or something. But or travel laws or, you know. Well, Danny's not too far from us. He'd be an interesting guest to have in oh, the studio. Oh, would love to have him. Yeah. He, got, he got more stories you could shake a stick. And then, the fun thing about it, uh, Danny, me and Danny were talking about that night uh, I was on the show with him up in Albany where they had that uh, autograph signing right before the March mm -hmm. of last year, before the, the, the shutdown. And he, and he needed some money for his electric bill. They're going to turn his electric lights off within a week. Where Daddy said he's not gonna, he wasn't going to get paid until the following week on his job. So he asked Vince if he could advance him $80. $80. Linda McMahon answered the phone. This is what she told Danny. Danny, for us to give you $80, how are we going to recuperate that money? $80. Was this after he was working with them? Really? So how are we going to recuperate that money? $80. For the guy that saved her husband's life. Wow. Eighty dollars. How are we going to recuperate the eighty dollars? Lifetime law patriot. Eighty dollars. Do you think if Vince answered the phone, he would have given it to him? Eighty dollars. Vince would not. Vince would have hung up on him. <laughs> Jeez, At least let him <laughs> talk to him. Vince would. They actually had a conversation where they wouldn't give the guy 80 bucks. 80 dollars. I would have probably given 80, him the 80 bucks, and I don't even know him. Pocket. And this is, this, we talk about a millionaire now. We talk about a millionaire. Not a millionaire, a billionaire. Billionaire. And wouldn't even give a guy that saved him from a fist fight 80 dollars so the man light could stay on. They contributed millions of dollars to Donald Trump's political campaigns. But could not but they give not give the wrestler 80 bucks. I just got my W-2 form for WWE for my royalties. Uh, what did you make last year? Let's hear it. $206 from royalties. 
That's See, it. See, when we did Legend House, you know what they did to us on Legend House? Yeah, you signed away the rights to any... We, we, signed, we signed away the right to any, any royalty at all. You made... So, for wrestling fans at home, well, we love to stress that we love to keep the wrestling legends working. That's Johnny. why I can't watch... I, I watch AEW, uh -huh. but I can't watch WWE because I know how what they think of the wrestlers. I know how they feel about the, uh, the, the, uh, 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 the wrestlers. They c could care less about them. So there it's are a lot of guys like Jericho and all them guys, they all of a sudden is going with, with AEW. You see Jim Ross and all them guys, yeah. they all going with... Jim Ross, they humiliated, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they humiliate the hell out of this man who who been in the business for, for years. He had Vince never... Well, here's the problem with, with Vince. And he knew I'm telling the truth, so I ain't going to say nothing. He probably watched the program. Vince... Mm -hmm never respected wrestler. He always wanted to use wrestler as a stepping stone to lead into something else. That's why he do what he do. He want to kill the WWE. He don't want to develop it no more. He want to kill it so that when he's gone, there's nobody, there's nothing left. He want to be the last promoter. The last, the last of the Mohegans. He want to be General Custer. He want to be the last of the Mohegan. Because you can just tell, because he hot shot and everything. He threw everything at the people. We leave what we call a hot shot. Yep. Normally we do an anger, one anger. We get about six, eight months out of that one anger. And then the following year, you know, that one anger would go for, you remember, a long time. And they would get the most mileage out of it. And then they may come up with an idea today, but they got this idea floating and doing good. So they would take that idea and move it over to next year. Vince threw it all. He did five years. He do five years of wrestling in one year. You know what, Tony? So it leaves nothing. He, he's, burning, he's burning things out. Because what can Vince do? Name one freaking thing that McMahon could do on his television that the people have not seen him do in the past. He, it's nothing left. I'm actually going to cut you off right now because this kind of ties into the episode we're going to have Tuesday, which I think you're really, really going to be interested right. in once we get to it. But I wanted to kind of circle back. There's a very interesting story about Danny Davis and Linda McMahon. I wanted to circle back to, again, Butch Reed. Uh, you mentioned he didn't come out on the, the, the positive end of his fight with Holly Race, but any interesting Butch Reed memories, stories? Did you ever travel with Butch? I know you said at first he was a pretty good guy. Well, first of all, his whole angle was my idea. I was going to mention that. He, the, it was my idea. He, he, not that he stole your gimmick, but he I, was given your gimmick. Back with Vince for doing the nah, 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 making the albums and what they call a TNT talk yep. show, had a TNT talk show. I, he, I just came back from AWA. I'm yeah. trying to renew on myself. You remember? Yeah, but he was still dropping me out anyway. Just Nobody. to just to set the fans, give them the the time frame. We're talking uh, summer of 1986. JYD you were jobbing out to everybody, right? And then at one of the TV tapings, I think they he asked was, you to yeah, job to Hercules. And, and he told me two things. I'm that, trying to set the plate, Tony. Right. W is that what the problem was? You were at a TV taping, and they wanted you to job on TV to Hercules? No, no. And you no, went and no, sat in the not car? The story. No, no, no. That, All right, you tell the story. Then. Okay. I'm sitting there, Vince, for some reason, he was sat and talked to me. He don't need any more, but back then he did. One idea he had was that I would get out of shape. And I would start training and get in the best shape of my life and win the world title. And he had this strip for a movie. He was going to make a movie of it. Well, he was telling me, this be great for you, Tony. This be great for you, Tony. Okay, I said, yeah, I'd I, I like to do that. I, I went home. Some guy sent me the strip to this, to this movie with Hogan. Mm -hmm. Then the movie came on, and you turned and lift a little. Tiny Lister. Yeah. The, Zeus. The Zeus. Yeah. And I'm sitting there, just, they told me they're going to give that to me. Also, as I was talking, Vince said, you know, you make a, you make a great hero, too. What you think of me dyeing your hair blonde? So I, I said, well, if it make me some money, well, 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 if you get asked to do it, you wouldn't refuse. I said, oh, no, I wouldn't refuse. It, you know, try to make us some money. I, I left the territory. I've turned on TV, Butch Reed. 
But from what I so remember, Vince would, would take your idea. If mm -hmm. you came up with an idea, he was talking down. Oh, that ain't going to work. That ain't going to work. A year later, he would use it. See, he feel that it have to be his idea. He got this idea that if he listened to somebody, then he's, not, he's no longer in control. You see, in the older days, I know this is getting off subject a little bit, but so the fans would know. The only thing that, that we would talk over in the older days were who going to win and who going to lose. And if you're going to win, how, what you're going to use, what type of move you're going to use. Are you going to use a headbutt, Tony? Are you going to put him in a sleeper? Or are you going to use a press slam? And I would say, press slam. They would walk back to the dressing room and say, Tony is going to win with the press slam. That was all the conversation we did. So the wrestlers have to, we were responsible of promoting ourselves in the ring. So we, we came up with our own character. Like nobody told Dusty Rhodes to be Dusty Rhodes. Nobody told Ric Flair how to be Ric Flair. Yeah. These guys were self-taught. Now, the newer guys, they never came into their own. One time I asked a guy, I said, uh, what gimmick should I have? He said, Tony, don't worry about a gimmick. You will come into your own. He said, it'd be a lot. He said, you could sell it a lot more if it's natural. He said, you can only fake a situation for so long before people see through it. That's why when you meet Ric Flair, you feel like you met the same person right. you've been watching. Called Ric Flair, that, that's Ric Flair. That, that's his character. Now, you would meet these other guys. And they cannot operate without a strip. When I wrestled Evan Bourne on TV, they gave me a strip of right. how or what they want me to do in the match. I had no say so in the match. I had no say so yeah. in my interview. And these guys now, when they turn them loose, when you work with them, they don't even know how to talk to fans. They like well, a zombie. You have to write everything right. down for them. You know, they can't operate until uh, 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 you you have to give them a strip. But just to circle back to the, the blonde hair dye, from how I remember it happening, you said you were at a TV taping and you, you had an issue with doing the job on TV to Hercules, and then Vince came out and talked to you. He said, I have an idea to turn you heel and dye yeah. your hair blonde. Yeah. Then you wound up eventually leaving, and then Butch Reed came in and they made him the blonde-haired African-American. You, you didn't you quit when you, after no, Adrian Adonis? His father. I'm talking about in August of no, 1986. No, no, yeah, yeah, but I didn't walk out on him then. You didn't quit? Who, no. how, how did you wind up leaving after the issue? They, they fired me. They fired you after the Adonis match? I went to... I went to uh, August of 1986, you right. laid down for Adonis I, and MSG, yeah, and the fans were I bullshit. Walked, I walked out of Vince before me and Rocket got the title. But what happened in August of 1986 when you left? They, they fired me. That's why I went to stay with SD House. Why did they fire you in August of 86? V this is what Vince told me. I can't use you on, on, on bottom because you're too good. And I can't use you on top. And then he walked away. Gorilla Monsoon, when I went to uh, Philly, I drove to Philly. Mm -hmm. And SD come up, I mean, SD was there. Then SD said, Tony, you know you're fired. I said, I'm fired. He said, yes. And then Monsoon came out and said, Tony, uh, uh, you're not working tonight. That's when I went and I stayed at the Ramada Inn. And then I left from there then. And I went to uh, Texas with George Scott. See, I thought I, yeah. I thought you left on your no, own in I August of eighty six. One time, they were back in the early. That was around eighty one. So they released you in August of eighty six. Interesting. See, I did, you know one thing, yeah. and we got to get back to it. P the very but th the way they do it is what pisses it you off. It was cold. Well, no, no, the lies. The lies. Vince, Vince is a very powerful man. Why he can't be? A, Vince is everything but a man. He's everything but a man. Wow. He's an overgrown spore. He's a punk. If I were to put it in my day, we would call that a punk. Mm -hmm. Like I'll give you an example. When me and you have a beef, we could talk to each other face to face. Right. And you could tell me right to my face exactly what you think and what you feel. When I work for the Crockett, man to man, mono on mono. I work for Vince Senior, man to man, mono on mono. Vern Gagne, man to man, mono on mono. Every promoter. In the business, but 
Vince. Vince would tell you like like this. Oh, Tony, don't worry. Your job is safe with, with here. You know, you safe. Uh, glad to have you aboard. The last time I was with him, Tony, you just as much a part of this company than anybody here. Go home, get the envelope from Pat Patterson, you're fired. That's the thing. See, we don't mind being released. If the lie is told to you, he make you believe why you there. Mm. That everything is okay. As soon as you get on that airplane and go home, the letter, Teddy Long used to always joke about that. He said, I wonder how many guys is walking around this dressing room right now that is fire and don't even know it. Right. See, the old time, they would give you a 30 day notice. They would let you know, yeah. well, you know, we're going to let weeks, you go. Two weeks, yeah. Something yeah, like yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to have to release you in 30 days. We, we'd be more than happy to help you to get started in something else. This is a good time that you can get something else going for yourself. So when you leave the business, find you another know, territory. Yeah. Yeah. Vince, the, Vince can't do it that way. All right, Tony, we got to try and circle back to Butch Reed. We're running out of time. We were, really weren't planning on this episode. Uh, again, any any interesting stories about Butch? How did you feel when you saw Butch Reed show up with the gimmick that they were going to give to you, but George Steele overheard it, and they realized they couldn't make you the blonde Tony Atlas? Yeah, well... Did you resent Butch? No, not Butch. Because you resented WWF. Well, well, not WWF, because WWF, the company, didn't lie to me. If the, you know, Vince did that. So I didn't, I never, the WWF, WWE had been good to me as a company. But Vince, as a, as a person, I lost respect in him. Oh. That's why whenever I go back, I don't talk to him much. Because I can't believe nothing he say. See, and that's how all the wrestlers, and I'm not the only one. Mm -hmm. They won't say that to his face. Right. But all the wrestlers feel, they like Triple H, because Triple H, what he said, you could believe what he said. Mm -hmm. With Vince, he's, he's such a good liar. I mean, he make you feel like, you know, welcome home, glad to have you here. You're going to be a great asset to the business. And, and right away, a week later, we need to get rid of him. But he would never tell you. That's why so many people hated Pat Patterson. He would, he would call the heat getter. Because when you get hard, here comes Vince with arms stretched out. When you get fired, you know when you're fired. Pat did the dirty work. Well, he started avoiding you. <clears throat> he won't talk to you. Mm -hmm. He ignore you. He started avoiding you. That, right, well, that's, how, that, yeah, that's how you do. And, and you will not know you fire. Vince will mail you the letter so that when you get home. It's waiting for you. All right, Tony, before we go, any final thoughts about Butch Reed, the natural? Yeah, I want to say Butch, uh, this is, uh, Butch Reed was uh, one of the best, was my tag team partner on several occasions. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, I did, believe it or not, I forgot about it until somebody sent me tapes. I got some tapes of me What promotion? I, I believe it was Mid-South, if I'm not mistaken. It got to be Mid-South, because we was, it was TV taping, and me and Butch, I, I got about 10 matches of me and Butch Reed. Oh, I wow. Be, but his hair was not blonde. Black, yeah. There was black then. And I got several matches with a, a, a butchery. I got to get somebody to make copies of it. I tried to bring tapes here, but it, it never get done. So I, I got to find somebody to make copies for me so I, so I could bring some down and, and, and show them to you. So. You, know, you know what I find so interesting, Tony? At one point, as we noted, Vince was interested in making you the blonde-haired Tony Atlas. Um, didn't happen because George Steele overheard it, and they were afraid he was going to go and tell the locker room that you kind of walked out and the, to avoid doing the job, then you were going to get a push. Then they bring Bush, Butch Reed in, they give him a big push, they make him the blonde-haired African-American, they were going to give him the Intercontinental Championship from Ricky's Steamboat, and he no-showed the TV taping, so they wound up giving it to the honky-tonk man. So Butch Reed shot himself in the foot from what was going to be a very lucrative gimmick compared to what Honky Tonk Man did with the title, and it could have been you. You could have been the man. Well, when if I you look back on it, I don't think Vince was going to do it with me. You don't think they would have I given you the belt? I think plan to do it with somebody else. It made me think that he was going to do it with me. That's Vince. Well, Butch but, came in probably a month or two after you got released right. in 1986. He, yeah. he already had planned to do that with Butch. He told me he was going to do it with me, and then, and then he wanted he was going to fire me and have me to sit back and watch Butch do it. 
Like Vince told me this one time. Now we got about he, 60 seconds, Tony. He said, I could find a guy that got, that you got more talent in your baby finger that he got in his whole body, and I could make him a superstar. And the guys laughed when he said that, because it was no joke. Showing up, they brought Junkyard Dog in with less talent than me in the ring, and he made him rich. And then Vince made me travel with Dog just so I could see <laughs> what I could have had. And he told me this about Hoga. Every time you look at Hoga, I want you to think of this. That coulda, shoulda, woulda been you. See, you screw Vince one time. Mm -hmm. He would never stop screwing you. Never. You on his shit list for ever. Ever and ever and ever. Yeah, well, you know what? Look what happened. When after Butch Reed no-showed that TV taping, I don't even think he was with the company for a year after that. So there you go. Well, it's always sad when I we lose. never went back. It never went back. It's always sad to lose a member of the Brotherhood. I bet we would have had a great interview with Butch Reed here in the studio. But again, it's all up to you folks as you can watch the premiere. We have the chat going. Hopefully we're having a lot of fun and some laughs wow, interacting great. with each other as Tony that enjoys his part. free Sprite. Uh, the oh. super chat is open for business, baby. That gray dollar sign. Click it. Tips of any size are welcome. It helps us keep the lights on. Or you can send us a little love on PayPal. In addition to that, the eBay store is open 24-7 worldwide. If you want to add some great wrestling memorabilia to your man cave, that is the place to go. And of course, more important than anything, our Patreon streaming service. It's less than a cup of coffee than Starbucks down the street. You get early ad-free access to all four of our weekly Wrestling Insider in-studio shoot interviews. You get access to our studio shoot interview DVD library that's been seen by millions online and millions more on the Howard Stern Show. You get exclusive content you can't see anywhere else. And most important, you help keep the wrestling legends working. So for this... Oh, One more thing, Dan. I yes, want to just short that. Just something for the fans. Okay. Do not have sex with baboon. All right, don't forget, fans, at 9 o'clock we have our SmackDown review program. Then at 10 o'clock tonight, it's Wrestling Insiders Week in Review. Tony is going to join me, join me for this special episode. Actually, you know what? No, he's not. That's next week because John Cena Sr. joins me at 10 o'clock tonight. I can't even keep the schedule straight. We have so much content, Tony. Well, as long as they remember my advice for right. 2021. No sex with bad boy. Because it could be dangerous. All right. That's well. the only reason. They're cute, though. All right. Oh, yeah. For the Hall of Fame of Tony Atlas, I'm Dan Marotti. We send our best to the Rube family, all of his friends, family, and fans. Till we speak again, folks, you and yours be well. We'll see you at 9 o'clock for the SmackDown Review. The World Wrestling Federation was live at Buffalo Memorial Auditorium in Buffalo, New York, Monday, February the 6th, 1985. In the opening contest, Salvatore Balomo drew Billy Red Lions. Jim the Anvil Neidhart with the win over Chief J. Strongball. Hillbilly Jim defeated Moondog Spot. Don Morocco victorious over Rick McGraw. Black Jack Mulligan beat Moondog Rex. Superfly Jimmy Snuka with the win over Cowboy Bob Orton. And in the main event, Andre the Giant and the Junkyard Dog battled Big John Studd and Ken Patera to a double disqualification. If you were in Buffalo Live, share your memories in the comment section below. Use the links in the description box to help keep wrestling legends working in our eBay store and on our acclaimed Patreon streaming service so we can bring you more interactive superstar shoot interviews to relive the good old days of professional wrestling. Check it out. Boston Wrestling Sports and the MWF explodes into a new year with professional wrestling content galore and need you to join our family. Every Tuesday night at 10 p.m. after our Monday Night Raw review, it's Wrestling Inside Us at your house with WWE Hall of Famer Mr. USA Tony Atlas. Wednesday nights at 10 p.m. after NXT and AEW, join rotating legends on Wrestling Insiders Special Edition. Every Thursday night at 10 p.m. after our NXT and Dynamite review, it's Marty Jannetty's No Holds Barred Sex, Drugs, and Rock and Roll Journey on Wrestling Insiders Party with Marty. Friday night after SmackDown, don't miss John Cena Sr.'s Wrestling Insiders Fabulous Fridays. Plus, look for classic clips, history videos, bonus live episodes, pay-per-view watch-alongs, and more. 
for less than a cup of coffee at Starbucks. Get early ad free access to our Wrestling Insider talk shows, our acclaimed studio shoot interview DVD library, and help keep wrestling legends working during the worst of times. Join our growing family at patreon.com backslash Boston Wrestling. Expect the unexpected in 2021.